glory to God in the highest, on earth, peace. What happens there is supposed to affect what happens here. When I engage with what's happening there, I become the most effective to bring that reality here. Peace. Hey. Good, good morning and Merry Christmas. Christmas praying for uh, prodigals. And at one point he said, it might even be your husband. I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. I actually thought I heard Kathy say, I'll take that. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, what? I, I thought she was trying to be funny with me. She said, I said, we'll take that. I went, we, oh, we'll take that. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I was just going to agree in prayer with her that the prodigal would come home, husband. <laughs> I think it's going to be today. <laughs> Finally came home. That's good. We you can stop fasting now. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Christmas is supposed to have jokes, but joy to the thank you joy to the world. Yes, it is. All right. This is from uh, Father Brendan LaRoche. I think it was from a year ago, and I forgot to read it. So I'm going to paraphrase it. People are telling me that Christmas trees and holly and ivy and mistletoe are pagan. And I respond by saying, yes, I do celebrate one of the holiest days of the year by decorating my home with trophies of my vanquished foes. <laughs> <laughs> I must remember that one. It's just, it's just way too good, way too good. Sometimes the amount of self-control it takes to not say what's on my mind is so immense, I need a nap afterwards. <laughs> if liar's pants really did catch on fire, watching the news would be more fun. Can you say that on Christmas? The salesman at the furniture store told me, this sofa will seat five people without any problems. I said, where am I going to find five people without any problems? <laughs> I did, I read this, uh, this will be the last one. I read this one a couple of months ago. I just, I still laugh when I think about it. It's a, it's a cartoon. And it's, it's all the animals that gathered around the... Uh, the manger. The camel says, I will bear him gifts. The donkey says, I will carry him. The fish says, I will pay his taxes. <laughs> the cow says, if you remember, there's a gold coin in the fish's yeah. mouth. Uh, the cow says, I will quench his thirst. The dove says, I will bless his baptism. Wow. The duck says, I will feed him. The sheep says, I will warm him. The pig says, I will let him fill me with demons and then I'll jump off a cliff. <laughs> let me finish it. <laughs> I will let him fill me with demons, then I'll jump off a cliff and wait, what? <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, that's, that's, that's seriously funny, whoever did that one. All right, well, Merry Christmas. Um, I want to read a, a portion of Scripture for you, and then we're going to share in communion, and that's our, that's our day together. Um, I, I want to read this out of the Passion Translation, and I, I, let me just read it to you. And it's a part of the story we don't always read. We, tr we try to, you know choose story wise men, you know, the announcement of the, of the birth and those kinds of things. This part of the story is where uh, Mary is now pregnant and she goes to visit her aunt, Elizabeth, who is also pregnant. Mary, of course, has, is the virgin birth, uh, carrying the Christ child. Um, 
And Elizabeth's birth is also a miracle, but not the same level. She was unable to have children, and now she is going to, about to give birth to John the Baptist. Yeah. And so this is, um, this is how the, the story goes down. At the moment her aunt heard Mary's voice, the baby within Elizabeth's womb jumped and kicked. How many women are feeling her pain right, right here at this moment? <laughs> jumped and kicked. <clears throat> And suddenly Elizabeth was filled with overflowing, too overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Wow. With a loud voice, she prophesied with power, Mary, you are a woman given to highest favor and privilege above all others, for your child is destined to bring God great delight. How did I deserve such a remarkable honor to have the mother of my Lord come and visit me? Stop and think about that for just a minute. Jesus actually addressed one of the major difficulties in receiving a miracle yeah. is oftentimes God will use people you know and you're familiar with. Yeah. And he said, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. So the whole concept is, is that familiarity actually prohibits us from receiving gifts, anointing, breakthrough from people we know well. Jesus, of course, was known well in his hometown. Yeah. And now he was announcing he was the Christ. But this story breaks the mold. Yeah. Because the aunt, the superior, yeah. Mary walks in the room. There's no announcement. There's no Bible study that she pro proves this is the Christ. There's just this moment where she walks into the room and the baby within her, John, recognizes the Messiah just entered the womb. He can't see, he can't hear. He's, he's, he's there. I mean, he can hear noises, but he, he's not able to, to recognize. And yet something in him leapt as he began to rejoice in the womb. Because in the womb is not just a fetus, it's a child. In the womb began to rejoice and celebrate at the presence of the Lord. Stunning. And the fact that she gave honor to a niece, yeah. I, I just think is worth noting. Yeah. She says, how, how did I deserve such remarkable honor to have the mother of my Lord come and visit me? The moment you came in the door and greeted me, my baby danced inside me with joy. Wow. Yeah, good. Every pregnant woman in the room, your child can experience joy can be taught the joy of the presence of God in the womb. Yes, that's good. Great favor rests upon you, for you have believed every word spoken to you from the Lord. Last point I'll make here, and then we're going to uh, share in communion. Great favor rests upon you, for you have believed. Yeah, it didn't just say great favor is rest upon you because you're giving birth to the Christ child backed up in the logic a bit and said, the favor is there because you believed. Yeah. Not understood. She didn't understand. That's right. That's right. She couldn't comprehend how she could become pregnant without knowing yeah. a man. There was not understanding, but there was willingness. There was yieldedness. There was surrender. And she prayed a prayer that we've been praying as a, as a group for, I think Dick Joyce is the one who first introduced it to us maybe 40 years ago. And it's that prayer that Mary prayed. Be it unto me according to your word. Say that with me. Be it unto me according to your word. The Lord will always speak about your future in a way greater than you can comprehend. And that's how you know it's him. He talks to us about where he's taking us. And he looks for one thing. That. I believe what you say. I don't understand it. I can't bring it about myself. But I am yielding to your purposes, to your will, to your word. Be it unto me, according to your word. Say it one more time. Yeah. Be it unto me, according to your word. I want uh, you to take the communion uh, emblems out and pull the bread out. I didn't get one, by the way. I, I, if somebody, uh, I mean, I, I, I normally get one, but we, had, we I used it last meeting. So, uh, so if, if you need one, if you don't have uh, the elements, put your hands up. And uh, ushers, if we could get you, uh, oh goodness, we have quite a few. All right. 
if we could get uh, ushers, maybe get some help here, get uh, some of our team running back and grab a basket or something. Yeah, thanks. Don't, don't become weary in well-doing. Just keep your hand up. There we go. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks. We want to bless and welcome all of our online community as well. We're, uh, it, it's such an encouragement to us, to me, to realize how many thousands and thousands of believers join us week after week from all over the world, and we just bless you. Bless you. We love you in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> I want to address a couple things in communion today. Christmas time, we rightfully celebrate the birth of Christ. I'm, I was just thinking during worship time today, you know, we need to pull up some of these songs in July. Yeah. I, I mean, they're, they're just gospel. They're just going to shock everybody, but let's just bring it up. In, Joy to the World is all all year long song. And uh, anyway, don't be surprised next July, <laughs> maybe June, who knows? All right. But we celebrate, rightfully so, the beauty and the wonder of the virgin birth of Christ. But what you hold in your hands is why he came. I take this wafer, whether I'm here with you or at home, I, I buy these by the box and take communion at home. I like to take this wafer, I like to break it. I like to hear the sound of it breaking because it's a reminder to me he became broken so that I could be whole. He became empty so I could be filled. He was rejected so I could be accepted. He was despised so I could be celebrated. He became sin so that I could become his righteousness. He bore affliction so that I could be healed. He went low so I could be exalted. It's the truth. He came to take our place in death so we could take the place he rightfully deserved in life. It's called salvation. No one can earn it, but you can receive it. It's a gift. This broken body, I was... Uh, once again, reminded once again in Corinthians when Paul talks about what he received from the Lord. He received a revelation from God of the purpose for this. It's very profound. Read it on your own. But there's one phrase that I want to take. It says, on the night in which he was betrayed. When he sat down with the guys and he shared the bread as his broken body, the wine as his blood. When he shared that in this communal setting, it was the night he was betrayed. Interestingly, right before that, he washed all of their feet. So we've got Judas' feet being washed. And then at the communion table, he's there at least for the first part. The Judas, the betrayer, a quote I read, I think it was last week, that really touched me. He said, our Christianity is not proven by our love for Jesus. It's proven by our love for Judas. We live in a highly offensive culture and society where you will always be applauded for helping the victim, as we must. but you will often be despised if you help the victimizer. Yeah. And yet this gospel is just that. Yeah. Everybody in this room has been abused, lied to, treated unfairly, but also everybody in this room has done something wrong, maybe just simple verbal stuff. You, you've been also, on some measure, yeah. 
the victimizer, losing temper, becoming angry, whatever it might be. The point is, is that we're here together because he loves the victims and the victimizers. Judas betrayed Jesus, but so did the other 11. And Jesus washed all of their feet knowing what was about to happen. He broke the bread and shared with him knowing what was about to happen. So as we partake of this today, we're going to do so seeking for what was announced at the birth of Christ. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. It's the reason for this. It's the reason. Glory to God in the highest, on earth, peace. What happens there is supposed to affect what happens here. When I engage with what's happening there, I become the most effective to bring that reality here. Peace. One last comment, and then we'll share in the bread and the body together. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul's talking about the separation of Jew and Gentile. I, I, think, I think it illustrates actually the greatest division in all of human history is the Jew and the Gentiles, those who are qualified for God, those who are not, the haves and the have-nots. You can fill out your list. It's these two. And it says in Scripture that Jesus bore in his flesh, when he was crucified, when he died, he bore in, bore in his flesh the wall that divided them. Just, just think with me. There is a, can I say, legal separation between the two. Yeah. And he took that entire wall that separates the two, and he allowed that wall to rest on his body in his death so that he could destroy its power. Yeah. That means there is no division on the planet that can withstand the wonder and the beauty of the gospel. None, Amen. none. The greatest was defeated. Everything else is cake from there. Yeah, come on. All right, why don't you stand? Oftentimes, when we uh, partake of the broken body of Jesus, <clears throat> I emphasize the scripture by his stripes, his torn flesh. His body, what we hold in our hand. By his stripes, we are healed. I believe that with all my heart. That there is something we are to proclaim. I believe the Lord's going to enable us to taste in, uh, of divine health. And in part, it's connected to this beautiful celebration of the Lord's Supper. But today, what I want you to do, primarily, I want you just to take 30 seconds or so and pray for some family member, some neighbor, work person, some situation that you know of where there's division and conflict. And I want you just to make a decree that what Jesus has accomplished is more than enough to heal that separation, to destroy the spirit of that division. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, it's a commandment, preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. It does not say create it because you can't create it. He already created it. You and I can only mess it up. And so he says, preserve it. So I want you to take 30 seconds and just pray for some. It may be a Judas in your life. Peter also denied Jesus three times. Judas just did it once. It was just terminal. It's true. true. (laughs) Take a moment and pray for someone that needs reconciliation and healing and do it in light of the broken body of Jesus. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Lord. We confess your word, glory to God in the highest, be exalted in the highest places. High praises, high praises, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. 
we just we declare that no separation, no division is greater than the power of the gospel. So we declare peace over our family line in Jesus' name. Receive the broken body together. Take the cup, open it. It's one of the main reasons I don't use a handheld mic is I couldn't possibly do that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like I would get it all over me. I just know I would. So, <clears throat> I stand before my family photo day after day. We have, we have several uh, of our whole family, but one is the newest, and I like to stand in front and pray for each family member, each family group. And I actually lightly touch. I'm hoping I don't get the photo too oily where I have to replace it. But anyway, I put my hands and touch each one. And what I, what I pray is I declare this, first of all, over my family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want you to say that with me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Just, just for this one statement, just close your eyes and hold the cup before the Lord. Because you're holding out the legal basis for that decree. Let's say it again together. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And then I pray. I pray for each one by name. We don't have time for you to cover your entire family line, but you can cover some part of your family in just a moment. And what I pray is I pray for three very specific things day after day after day. Number one, God, we will serve you in purity. Holiness is important. We will walk in purity. Number two, we will, we will do so with passion. We're going to be all in. Everything about us is in this devotion to you. And then thirdly, we're going to do so with power. We refuse to do this gospel apart from power. We're not trying to be in form only. We, we want to bring a message that transforms lives. So I want you to take another 30 seconds. Pray for some members of your family and just pray for them right now. Just by name, name them before the Lord. Yep, it's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Health and wholeness. Father, we pray. We pray for our families. We stand before you with joy and praying for our families, those who are walking with you, those who are not. We just declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We acknowledge that the blood of Jesus is enough to cover the worst sins in any of our households. And I pray right now that this Christmas season into New Year's would be a season of great visitation. It's been announced in our offering reading today. Open heavens, open heavens, visitations, encounters, angelic visitations. We pray these things over our family. For the honor of the name Jesus, let's take and receive the blood together. Thank you, Lord. Wow, wow, wow. You know what? That's the way to spend Christmas right there. Is there, is there anyone here that uh, doesn't have a passion translation and you really could use large print? Right here? Yeah? All right. Here, it's yours. Yeah. There we go. I, I forgot my coat this morning. I came all the way to the office and went, where's my coat? So I went home to get it. I couldn't find my keys. I thought I left them in my office. There was a lockbox. I finally got it open. I got in the house and I found my keys were in my pocket. I grabbed my coat and forgot my Bible. I don't, I don't forget my Bible going anywhere. I forgot my Bible. So I went in my office and said, I must have a passion translation. And I had several uh, editions. And I thought, it's going to be Christmas for someone today. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna so anyway, Merry Christmas. God bless you guys. Come on up and uh, wrap this thing up. Merry Christmas. Hey, hey, let's have ministry team come on up quickly. Help us out.